Today we're gonna to be talking about hidden gem fragrances. To be specific, five of them. These are fragrances that don't get talked about a whole heck of a lot. Some of them maybe a little bit more than others, but for the most part, they're not really high beasts. Still yet though, I think each one of these is very solid and I love every one of them. Maybe not that much, but still I like them. <laughs> hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing really well today. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about these hidden gems. First fragrance we're gonna talk about here is probably, well, I'd say definitely actually the most well-known of these five. And this comes also from a house that's really well known. And I've talked about this in the past. I know some other people have talked about it as well, but I still think it's a hidden gem because I think this fragrance is fantastic for the price. It is Star Walker from Mont Blanc. It has bamboo, citrus, ginger, and sandalwood as some of the notes in the fragrance. The bamboo is really what people like to cling on to with this because how often do you see bamboo in a scent? Not that often. Perfect fragrance for pandas. The bottle here I actually love. It's super simplistic, basically just a kind of a square, really. <laughs> but it's uh, it's nice. It's, it's a good square. Sometimes I hate bottles that look simplistic. Other times I like them. I, I really don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to that, but I like this one. Now the performance here is not fantastic, but the scent absolutely is. It's relaxing, it's fresh. It's got just a hint of sweetness a little a bit of a watery feel as well. Fantastic in spring, summer, maybe even fall as well. A lot of people actually wear this fragrance to bed because it's it's got that, that chill kind of feeling to it. Not chill as in icy, but chill as in, hey man, I feel good. And this fragrance is fairly inexpensive as well. Not gonna cost you all that much money. Easy to find at discounters. You can often find it at TJ Maxx. You can find it at Ross's. You can find it at Marshall's. It's kind of hit or miss. It's not going to be there every time. It's not like, you know, whatever the newest CK friggin' summer flanker is. You can find those pretty much every time, but you can still find it with some regularity. So Star Walker, I think it's a hidden gem, even though I've talked about it a bunch and other people have as well. Star Walker never, ever, ever is going to reach the level of explorer or legend or legend spirit or frankly, most of the fragrances that you can find from Mont Blanc nowadays. It's basically their minor league fragrance at this point. You know, it's their their black sheep. You can still find it out there, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people care. And frankly, they should. Next up, we've got one from Michael Malul. <laughs> I, I, that, was, that was stupid. Michael Malul. Jet Black Intense. This is the newest flanker in the Jet Black line from Michael Malul. And for the record, I paid for this bottle. Thank you. This one's got apple, mint, lavender, and vetiver as some of the notes in the fragrance. It's got a good amount of freshness off the top, actually. You would think with the name Jet Black Intense that this is gonna be like super dark, you know, punching you in the face with maybe heavy woods and smoke or something like that. Really doesn't. When you first spray it on, apple, mint, like I said, fresh, touch of green in there, really nice and bright. Bit of sweetness, but not too much, just a, a little touch. As it dries down, you get some aromatic facets, some woodiness in the base as well, a touch of suede also. Really solid scent, actually. Whole bunch of versatility. It's got good performance as well. The atomizer with this one gives you kind of a, well, let me show you, kind of a kind of a cloud that's in close a little bit. So when you spray this on, maybe, maybe spray it on a little bit closer. Yeah, like that. I believe that some people have compared it to Creed's Aventus, but I myself don't actually find it very similar to Aventus at all. When you wear them side by side, really not that close. I mean, there's Apple and, and there's also Apple in Aventus. So you could say, hey man, that one Apple note, that's kind of like, kind of almost like that Apple in Aventus, you know what I mean? Right, right, but, but is it, the whole thing, is it like Aventus, the whole the whole thing? Nah, man, but the apple though, that's that's pretty close. <laughs> I'm just kind of messing with you, but at the same time, I'm completely serious. Also, if you want, I've got a code, it gives you 20% off, it's off the whole Michael Malou website, it's Gent Sense, not Gents Sense, Gent Sense, so G-E-N-T-S, C-E-N-T-S, ta-da. And also to be completely clear here, I don't take a commission from Michael Malou. 
no commission, 0%. Uh, I did tell them though, that if anybody uses the code that I want to flip that into maybe like free bottles for you guys or gift cards for you guys. So there's a possibility at some point down the road that I'll do some giveaways for Michael Malul stuff. I don't know, but that's uh, just throwing that out there. There is a code. I don't make any money off it, but there's a possibility if enough of you use the code that you get free stuff down the road. Yeah. All right, next up, any mall seduction. This bottle is both awesome and terrible at the same time, and I love it. Let me explain. First off, pretty cheap. The cap is just flimsy plastic. It weighs approximately nothing. And then the bottle is uh, fairly, fairly heavy. It's got this nice little animal on the side and then this strange waffle pattern on the bottom. It looks, like I said, a little bit cheap. At the same time, looks kind of like something from a sci-fi movie. So overall, I think a lot of people are going to look at that and be like, nee, nee. and when I look at it, I think that's pretty sweet. It has mint, lavender, rosemary, and bergamot as some of the notes in the fragrance. It's a good night out scent, which you would expect. Fragrance is called seduction. Bottle is all black. It's a good date night type of scent. It's sweet. It's easy to wear. When you first spray it on, like the first 10, 15 seconds. It doesn't smell amazing. It's got well, an inexpensive smell to it, sort of alcoholy at times. Let it settle, smells great. Now, it did not get any hype whatsoever when it came out, and I understand why it's not a big house. Like I said, it looks cheap, especially when you hold it in your hand and pick off the cap, pick off the cap, take off the cap. <laughs> it looks bleh. And sure, you could say maybe it's not really inspiring. It's not the pinnacle of artistry and fragrance. I don't know why people that love scents sound like that, but it's not that. Fair play, fair play. But as far as being just a nice fragrance that people are going to like and potentially compliment with nice versatility, good performance, all that stuff. Yeah, it's got that for sure. The best part about it doesn't cost all that much. We're kind of grading on a curve a little bit here because you can find this for under $30 at some discounters. And that's for a full presentation, 100 milliliter size bottle. So graded on a curve under $30, it's solid. Now, if you buy it for full retail, you know, $80, $90, whatever retail is on this, I'm actually not sure at all. Yeah, at that point, it's no longer really a hidden gem. At that point, you paid over double what you should have for just a simple, sweet, easy to wear night out scent. And that's on you. Don't blame me because you pay too much. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to a niche fragrance, shall we? This one is from Aiton Bob. It's called Egypt. And I haven't spoken about this one in quite a while. Again, another simple presentation, just a square bottle. And you know why I like this one? <laughs> I'm like a child here. It's got suede on the front. <laughs> Legitimately, I'm like, hey man, ooh, that feels nice. If the suede fell off though, if this little sticker came off, presentation, oh, terrible at that point. Mm. But with the suede. This one has a little bit of a throwback feel to it because it's got a heavy emphasis on lavender and uh, actually a lot more than you might expect because the name of the fragrance is Egypt. It's got this uh, ambery kind of coloration. You would think it's gonna be all warm spices and resins. And there are some warm spices in here. You've got a good dose of cardamom, for example, but lavender is gonna be the main player here. So you do have some of that warm spiciness that you would expect with the name and the coloration and everything, but a focus on this throwback masculine lavender it gives it great versatility, nice compliment factor. It's very classy, office safe. You could wear that formally as well. Solid scent. And the price on it, even at full retail, is not that bad as far as niche fragrances are concerned. It's under $200 for a full 100 ml size bottle. You can also get a little 30 milliliter size bottle for I think 60 or $65, something like that for a niche scent. It's not that much. And that one you can sometimes find at discounters. You can also find it on Twisted Lily. If you do go to Twisted Lily ever, use code GENTS10, get 10% off of the entire website. I know it's like the second code in this video, but I'm throwing it out there just in case you're unaware. So Aiton Bob, Egypt, probably my second favorite from the house. Nuit de Majeve, I would say is my first, 
but Egypt also awesome. And last up, a new fragrance for me. I picked this up about a week ago from Marshalls and it's this. Guess Seductive Ohm. So we, we've got a lot of seductive stuff going on here. We had Animal Seduction and now Guess Seductive Blue. With this being Guess, a lot of people are gonna trash it and write it off without ever smelling it because Guess does not really command a lot of cachet in the fragrance world. I mean, I paid $16 for it and online you can pick it up, I would say in the $20 range. Again, assuming we're talking discounters. Bottle looks fine. I mean, it's not anything mind blowing and the cap does a weird kind of spin thing. It doesn't really lock into place like you think it should to keep the bottle looking nice, but you win some, you lose some. The atomizer is actually surprisingly good. See that? That's nice. A lot better than you would expect. And actually out of the five fragrances that I've talked about here today, that one has the best atomizer. Yeah, the cheapest one. That's the best atomizer, go figure. It's got cardamom, sea notes, cashmere, and pepper as some of the notes in the fragrance. Actually smells a little bit similar to La Nuit Alone, only much, much, much more affordable. Now, it doesn't have the cachet of Yves Saint Laurent because this is Guess, uh, but realistically to almost everyone on earth, that doesn't actually matter because they're smelling the fragrance, they're not seeing the bottle projected in front of you as you walk or go somewhere. Maybe then it would be a little bit different, you know, with clothing or shoes or your car or something like that, people can, they can see it and identify the brand, right? When you walk by somebody or they come near you or whatever and they smell your fragrance, they don't see a hologram image <laughs> of the fragrance bottle to immediately identify it. They don't go, oh, that's a, uh, what is that? Oh, Tom Ford, it says, <laughs> I know that, that's expensive, yay. If you're wearing something that smells good and it works on you and it works in the situation, you win. If you're wearing something that smells like crap and it doesn't work in the situation, you lose, pretty simple. All that to say, uh, it ultimately it doesn't matter that it's guess, people won't know. It does have a nice compliment factor. If you're after that kind of thing, it's a little bit fresher than La Nuit de Lone. Performance seems to be so-so. I've only worn it a couple times, but overall, it's really, really good. Surprised the heck out of me for the price. I was expecting a total dumpster fire, if I'm being honest with you guys. I did not expect it to be good. I was actually really surprised it smelled like La Nuit de Lone. I didn't I looked that one up before I bought it. I just grabbed it because it was on the clearance rack. I figured, why not? And, uh, it's good, really good. It should have been on more cheapy lists, um, or maybe it has been and I've completely missed it. That's possible too, but for me, this one flew way under the radar, so I know for a lot of you out there, it has also. So guess Seductive Ohm, solid. So there we go, five under the radar hidden gems or whatever. They don't get talked about enough. They're good, sometimes really good. Let me know in the comments. What are some fragrances that you personally feel are hidden gems? To you, it can be a hidden gem. It doesn't matter if it's a hidden gem to everybody else. If it's a hidden gem to you, let me know. All right, it's gonna do it for me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.